Now we're heading towards one of the final sessions of TikTok the stage, but there's still lots to come. Up next, Nikhil Sandhu, head of Creative Lab Southeast Asia, together with key panelists from advertising, brand, and creator segments, will explore how creativity and joy on TikTok drives business success for brands. Hello and welcome to our session on how you can level up with creativity and joy on TikTok. Today I'll be walking you through and telling you how brands and agencies can level up their game on our platform. So in true TikTok fashion, let's slide into a video. challenges to collaborations so that everybody can be creative on our platform, which also makes us a platform like none other. Our users create content that is innovative and creativity is a huge role in all of this. It's not something that you spend five minutes on. I'm sure a lot of our viewers who are tuning in know what I'm talking about. You know how five minutes can quickly turn into hours when you're scrolling through our for you feed. So join me as I walk you through this quick overview of how to level up on TikTok. It's a leading destination for short form mobile video content and our mission is to inspire creativity and joy. Our platform is the home for creative expression through videos that create a genuine, inspiring and joyful experience. No matter how small or big your business or brand, no matter what you're creating, selling or collaborating on, we believe your brand deserves to be discovered right here on TikTok. Looking to level up your brand with creativity and joy? The pillars I'll be talking to you today about are authenticity, vertical sound on video, and collaboration. Our users recognize the value of being creative. They are confident, unapologetic, and willing to show their authentic self to the world. Due to this, their level of creativity on TikTok is truly unmatched. This also leads them to be very comfortable in their own skin, embracing their flaws and imperfections. Our users want to see brands as being honest. And like a lot of us, they would rather trust brands whose values align with their own. Here are a couple of examples of how creators and brands have worked closely to create content for TikTok. This right here is my swipe. Server landing, can you please put your laptop away? Just small handheld devices. Sure. You still need to put that away. It's a tablet, it's small and it's handheld. I meant like uh, your phone. Yeah, I can make calls with it. Hey! Whee! 
Jeannie Minnie started by making her videos for fun before brands started approaching her and offering her opportunities. That aside, both Hot Chicky Lace and Jeannie Minnie's videos follow two of TikTok's golden rules. Do you know what I'm talking about? Content on TikTok should be full screen and sound on. TikTok's full screen vertical sound on format offers marketers many new ways to land their brand. Thanks to music, sound effect, and bespoke branded effects, connecting brands to their audiences has never been easier. With innovative ad formats from the in-feed to the branded hashtag challenge, brands on TikTok now have tools to inspire culture. From getting TikTokers to smile and show off their teeth to hijacking a popular festival, there are three great examples of brands becoming part of a cultural fabric. Colgate wanted to celebrate and remind everyone that you can light up the world with a bright smile. Using a gamified planet effect, the first in Southeast Asia, Colgate launched the hashtag Win With A Smile branded hashtag challenge and saw phenomenal participation from all our users with over 2.3 million videos being created. to remind Singaporeans to celebrate the Chinese New Year safely during the COVID-19 pandemic through a fun, engaging, yet informative branded hashtag challenge on TikTok. Atomi, the buy now pay later brand from the new music group called the Atome Kittens as part of the shop attainment campaign. The catch? The Atome Kittens isn't the girl group, but comprised of a litter of kittens. To amplify the song, Atome ran a TikTok challenge to encourage consumers to dance along to the tune with their own pets. At last count, it had hit about 5.8 billion views. Atome Kittens, same with the most amazing feels you'll ever see. Three deals a week, that's what makes us great. Creators are the secret ingredient to unlocking engagement and building trust on TikTok. It's the easiest way for brands to get started on TikTok. Creators get two times the engagement compared to videos that our other users create. They also set new trends and foster subcultures, forming strong, positive, and inclusive engagement within communities and brands. There are two more great examples of how creators unlock engagement. We all know that sound is better received on TikTok. It helps evoke emotions, create appealing and engaging content. Here's an example of a creator explaining her retail experience by riding on an existing music trend. <laughs> And this creator inspires me about authenticity, sharing her entrepreneurial journey, the ups and downs, connecting with her audience, showing a different side of herself. I remember when, I remember, 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 Available in over 20 countries with over 20,000 certified creators, it's never been easier for brands to find their perfect creator, manage collaborations, uncover detailed data insights, and promote branded contents with targeted ads. With its highly sophisticated filtering function, the Creator Discovery tool helps brands find the right creator for any campaign and any marketing objective. And here's a look at how creators meet brands to bring next level engagement with branded hashtag challenges. Our creators are the original inventors who make TikTok what it is today, creating, remixing ideas to entertain.
creators and brands celebrate and discover the creative in each other, magic happens, even with the sip of a soft drink. Thanks to bespoke branded effects, we all see our creators and brands working together, inspiring everyone to get active and engaged together. We've covered the different facets businesses and brands can use to level up the game on TikTok. And before we get into the conversation with our panelists, here are four key takeaways from today. Authentic and joyful content always lifts up the consumer's emotions. Music and sound can help create some brilliant viral moments and engagement on our platform. And remember, entertainment that puts creativity and creators at the center is the new marketing standard. TikTok is the place where communities and brands celebrate and grow together. With that, I'd like to introduce you to our panelists. Good afternoon to all our viewers tuning in from Southeast Asia and across the world. Our topic for today, how to level up with creativity and joy on TikTok. Let me introduce our wonderful panelists here today. Our first panelist is Vijay Anand, creative and managing partner at Vayner Media APAC. Prior to this, Vijay was senior vice president for creative at Gojek and headed not only the creative team, but also the social activation and content team. As someone who has been actively on the platform for a while, Vijay will be sharing his perspective on how brands can engage with TikTok. Our second panelist is Valerie Madon, Chief Creative Officer for VML and Vaya Asia. Having spent over 20 years building brands and creative solutions across Southeast Asia and the globe, Valerie is a leading figure in the creative industry. She's won numerous awards and has been on the jury of Cannes, DNAD, and Spikes Asia, to name a few. And in 2010, she became the first female chairperson of the Creative Circle Awards in Singapore. Today, she'll be sharing her insights on how authenticity can help brands on TikTok. Next, I'd love to introduce Vanji Hu, VP Marketing at Atomi. With over 15 years of experience in blue chip companies and tech startups across China, Asia, and the world, Vanji is a passionate believer in the power of disruption. Today, Vanji will be sharing great craft secrets about how the Atomi Kitten campaigns ran on TikTok. And please welcome our final panelist from Thailand, Woody Milantachinda, a content creator, an executive producer, a host, and an entrepreneur, and a firm believer of being authentic and real. Woody will be sharing his perspective on how do you create content on TikTok. So let's start with Vanji. Vanji, you've run a very successful campaign on TikTok. What's your secret? Uh, Nikhil, this is a quite an interesting and joyful question as well. Uh, yeah, if uh, I recall my um, memory and the journey with this uh, campaign together with Vietnamese and TikTok, I think three things pop up in my mind. Uh, I think first of all, um, I think it's a very strategic and purposeful choice for Atomi to partner with TikTok and Vietnamese. Um, so as a buy now, pay later regional leading brand, uh, Atomi is very much conscious and based on our consumer consumer uh, survey that uh, our core um, Bu'ai target audience as Gen Z, right? Which we believe uh, shares a lot of common interests and strength with uh, TikTok and also VaynerMedia's um, focus. So that's why uh, TikTok also has been part of our journey from the beginning to the end. Uh, secondly, uh, we really follow very strictly the consumer-centric um, creation process. So we started with the ideation workshop uh, co-hosted with VaynerMedia and together with the Atomi team. We also invited in a few Gen Z colleagues, basically they have that, their in natural insight and also the resp uh, response. So we created a list of the ideas based on the Gen Z culture insights shared back by uh, VaynerMedia. Uh, then uh, after we accumulate a list of the um, drafted idea, we ran the Gen Z focus groups in Singapore and in Indonesia and run the co-creation session with the Gen Zs. So that's why we really believe in the aha moment that, you know, um, the standard formula of uh, double digit shopping fair, like uh, what has been finished uh, just now, 9-9, then incoming 10, 10, 11, 11, has tired the audience a little bit according to their response. So we definitely want to turn their heads through a um, more a sales week combining with the fun element. So we position it as shop attainment. Uh, Vayner Media also made a very smart uh, tweak and, and uh, creating those um, tongue-in-cheek, playful uh, title, like let's get it, let's get it. So I think you can see on the uh, the top, uh, the get it week. Uh, it's a creative according to the Gen Z Millennium Spark, uh, the speak for the let's get it. So in a nutshell, right, the creation um, 
of the yeast campaign is founded um, very robustly. Uh, only because I think all of the parties, no matter uh, our creative agency and also the platforms, we are very much focused on creating a campaign that's really for Gen Z. So lastly, uh, but I personally believe this is the most important thing. Uh, we didn't uh, hard fit a uh, formed campaign into TikTok. Instead, we uh, create a challenge and live streamings for TikTok and with TikTok. So at the very early stage, we invited the TikTok Creative Lab into the brainstorming sessions with the Vayner Media team and also our own team. Uh, I really, really still remember the memory is so, uh, so fresh that uh, we generate a very rich insights and also take a lot of inspirations provided by TikTok. Even uh, along the journey, we receive a lot of challenges and pushbacks from the TikTok team saying that uh, it doesn't make sense for the ideas that you have put on the table. Uh, so it's quite a joyful journey. And also uh, the joy also lies in the continuous uh, optimization. So in interestingly, we, we actually literally met TikTok team every week, reviewing the progress and also judging based on data, what should be optimized. Then we iterate together quickly. Um, TikTok team did make the effort of helping us to further um, optimized even during the campaign. So go back to the question, Nico, you have uh, asked, right? Um, is there any secret? Actually, my answer is very simple. There's no so-called secret at all. So the recipe is so simple and uh, adaptable for every brand. Number one, find the strategy partners uh, holding the same faith. Number two, be very much uh, consumer centric. Number three, uh, lean on their expertise and also really trust them. Wonderful. Thank, thank, thank you. I think that was very, very insightful, and thank you for, for, for letting us know that. And I think, I think one point that I, I kind of really, really resonate with is the fact that you said, you know, you, you got us into the room very, very early because uh, you know sometimes what what happens is you know we have pulled into the room uh, once the entire communication campaign is ready and it's going to go live on platforms, and that's when they pull into TikTok and they say, hey, what can we do with this campaign that we have there? So while we, we do of course help out brands and try to solve for them, but I think like Rekhi said, having us in in the room. When you are actually designing the entire communication plan, uh, we can add a lot in terms of you know addressing the entire marketing funnel, not just one part of it towards the end of it. But thank you so much. Uh, I think with this, I'll probably move to Vijay. Vijay, you've worked with so many brands and you seem to have gotten under their skin, and, and you actually know how they think. Uh, how do you think brands should approach working on TikTok? Well, I think Renji kind of spoke a little bit about it, and the campaign with Renji, we worked together with Tommy on that, right? And uh, you know, I. My background as well, you know, I've worked in the agency side and I've worked in a platform or a, or a tech platform, right? And the last thing you want to do, uh, and so the old school way is always like, oh, we'll think of the idea with the agency or with the client. And then at the end, like you were mentioning, go to the platform. That is the wrong way to do it. Involve the platform, like Vanji said, right at the beginning. I think that's so important because the platform knows the data, how people mess around, you know, how to mess around with the algorithm, how to hack that, how to, how to really be creative with that. And working together only makes the work better. So I, I think that's like the first point, like I think uh, Vanji and, and you were touching on, which was super interesting as well. And a lot of brands, you know, like are coming now, like we're working with Vayner Media, we're having super interesting briefs. We used to have a lot of briefs like, oh, campaign idea or film. Now the, the more exciting briefs is, hey, we want to launch our TikTok channel in Australia. We want to launch our TikTok channel in, in, uh, in Thailand. We're getting a lot of briefs like that. And, you know, the first, the last thing you want to do is put ads on these platforms because you know it's never going to work. We keep saying that to clients. We keep saying that every time when we present. But not, we always fall into the trap, oh, but we are a brand. We still have to do communication. We still have to do marketing. We still have to do, uh, we still have to sell products. You need, and when you said this, right, like think of the consumer first. The last thing they want to do is someone in a platform like TikTok because you're seeing so much fun stuff. And then suddenly it's just an ad and buy this right now. Nobody wants to see that in a platform like TikTok, right? So um, think consumer first, think platform first, work with TikTok, work with your, your agencies, work with your brand team, make what is important for a consumer. I think that's like the first thing you got to put in mind. And a lot of things come out from there, right? Like you can't put ads. Ads are too perfect. Uh, you need some reality, authenticity, not having, you know, like having flaws, all these things. And clients, when, whenever clients, we always tell clients that like in a platform like this, you got to be genuine. Forget about perfection. 
embrace the flaws, you know, things like that is so, so important when you get a brief, like, you know, let's do something with TikTok for brands. We're getting so much of that right now. Lovely. That's, uh, that's wonderful to hear. Right? But I think you, you touched upon a great fact of, of being, uh, you know, authentic, but, but I, I think I'll, I'll move to Valerie. Valerie, creative authenticity, it, you know, the, the term is, it's a great term, but that's easier said than done. What, what's your mantra for, you know, telling brands, you know, how to work with TikTok? I think they, you know, the key thing, like, you know, like both Benji and, and BJ said, right? I think firstly, brands need to be brave, right? I think they got to also, you know, they're too used to having a lot of guardrails when they create communication. And I think, you know, they, they need to go back to where a lot of them have the true DNA of doing something purposeful and, you know, that's that's where the real authentic self is, you know, and whether that can they reflect that their true authentic self in a platform like that, that really matters to the audience, you know, instead of trying to curate something that, you know, and second guessing what the audience wants. You know, and I think with that, you know, with the, that authenticity comes also, it's all about test and learn. I think people can be very afraid of being authentic because they don't know what works, right? So, you know, but actually with the moment you put your gut down and if you're willing to test and learn, and, and that's the nature of TikTok, to be very honest, even the layman who creates a video, puts it up, it is all test and learn. And also, I think brands need to take on that approach in order to really test whether the, their authenticity would work with the audience on TikTok. And they will. I always believe that when a brand stays true to who they are, and when they show real purpose, you know, and they care about the people on the, you know, on the platform, they give them what they want, then, you know, it, 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 you know, the dots will always join naturally. So I think it's, it, it always fails when, when honestly, a lot of brands and clients second guess, don't, they don't really know what, they don't even use TikTok themselves. And they assume from just a few things that they've seen, like, let's do another challenge. Let's do another challenge. <laughs> it's like, you're just copying. You're not being authentic. So, so I think that's the thing that they need to get out of is don't copy, you know, find in yourself who you are. Make sure you're very clear about your KPIs. I think that's one thing that doesn't come through enough. And then too far down the road, when you've designed something, you realize, hey, that's not exactly what I want to achieve. <laughs> so, you know, I, I always said, you know, come to TikTok with a clean slate, like a clean brief, be very clear about what are your, you know, your KPIs that you're going to measure at the end of this, whether it's brand affinity, whether it's brand awareness, whether you're really trying to sell something, you know, take that brief to TikTok together with the agency and brainstorm together from there. You know, so... Yeah. I like what Valerie, Valerie is saying here, right? The herd mentality. Uh, when people like Valerie, you were talking about like you're jumping into doing what people, other people are doing. And you know, like everybody's doing dances on TikTok, but it's not true. Yeah. Like a brand that uh, automatically see it. If you don't know the thing, you're like, Oh, let's do another challenge or let's do another dance. But you're a food brand. Why are you doing that? Like recipes are big on TikTok. Food is big on TikTok. Do what you're, you're uh, that's right for the brand. I think that's hot on, right? Yeah, I also agree with that. I think uh, I also hear some of my uh, friends, other brands, um, collaborate with TikTok basically because TikTok is growing and maybe their bosses ask them to do to so, right? But for, I think it's more important as a client, if we choose to do it, need to believe in this platform and also need to know how to, how to play as a real user. If you don't really play with the TikTok, then how are you going to be empathetic and understand what's going to work at the first beginning? I do, I do, I do echo uh, with the, what uh, Valerie has said. Absolutely, I, I, I think that that's just a wonderful insight. I think, yeah, uh, Woody, can I can I ask you to chip in on on what uh, Vanjie and Valerie and Vijay have just said? Well, I I agree with all of them, and I mean, you got to find your authentic self. I went on TikTok for the first time. I was a bit overwhelmed because. Woody can be a host, Woody can be a storyteller, Woody can promote brands, or we can just do viral dances on TikTok. Now, what can Woody be for TikTok? Which part of me will be authentic enough for TikTok? Because there is that level of you being authentic and that level of you being authentic for TikTok. If you guys know what I mean? So I had to basically um, 
try all these different styles of being myself on TikTok. And I, and, and I finally found, you know, who I can be for TikTok. And I think that's what brands need to do. They need to go on TikTok. They need to be on TikTok, first of all. <laughs> they need to enjoy TikTok because if you don't enjoy TikTok and you're and you're investing in TikTok, it's not going to work. You need to, and especially if you're brand managers, you got to know TikTok. So like what the guys have been saying is so true. You have to enjoy TikTok. Go on it often and test out. And it's not, for me, I, I own brands too as well. And it's not expensive. I mean, it's really cheap, guys, to invest in TikTok. And, you know, and the thing that we got back from TikTok is just immense. With Gen Z and, and what I enjoy doing is trying out all these new techniques in terms of marketing. With TikTok, you can always play around. So, yeah, I, I agree with all of them. You've got to be authentic and, and enjoy being on TikTok. It would be interesting to get your perspective because you're not only a star on TikTok, you're a star on a lot of other platforms as well. Uh, you know, what do you feel is, is you know, the, the major difference between TikTok and, and the other platforms? Well, as Marie Kondo mentioned before, I think we all know this, you know, you got to do whatever sparks joy, right? And for me, it, it sparks joy to me. On Facebook, I get a bit aggravated when I read posts from friends or read the news or, um, or, you know, on other platforms, I just basically, I have tons of emotions going on. But on TikTok, it's just the joy. You know, the first time I, I go on TikTok, I'm like, wow, I can be on this platform for hours. I enjoy watching the content and I enjoy, you know, waking up thinking about, oh, what can I do for TikTok today? Or, or what can I do differently from the other influences? So it sparks joy for me. And I've been on it for almost two years now. And yeah. I have tons of fun. So it's about enjoying yourself on TikTok. I think that's that's most important to me. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Vijay, h- how easy has it been for you uh, to find collaborators uh, and, and creators who, who work uh, with you on TikTok? Um, there's a lot, right? Uh, in Asia, we see, we see the wave, you know, all over. We've been doing some stuff in uh, Singapore for uh, some different brands. We've been doing stuff in Thailand. Uh, we're starting in Australia quite a bit. Um, so it's not hard. I think the hardest part, there's so many people around uh, who are doing. The hardest part is, one, finding the right one that's for the brand, that's the right tone, that's the right voice. You know, like you do want to, fo- and, and the most important thing is you don't want to force the influencer, the talent to do something that is not native to their own content, right? Okay. If you're going to force them to do something else, their fans are not, you can see some of the brands that do that with some influencers. When you go down, you're seeing like 500k views, you're seeing like, and then suddenly a branded one is like 10k views. Uh, because they're not doing what they used to do. So the genuineness is lost. You're hard selling a brand. Nobody wants that, right? So the hard one is finding the right tone and the right kind of content or the influencers that do something that you want to achieve with the brand without, you know, like bastardizing their content as well. Right. I think that's so, so important. So I think just finding the connection, finding the right one. And we also actually, there's something that I wanted to talk about, you know, like TikTok influencers or uh, talent are also transcending screens. Uh, if you know it, with uh, now there's uh, Edison Ray is an actor in, in shows yep. and TV shows. And uh, we are already casting TikTok uh, celebrities or influencers to be on ads so that you can do a multi-screen uh, experience as well from the ad that they see on different platforms or different screens. And then you see them on TikTok. It's all kind of cohesive and one whole story and the same people. So I, th- I thought that was quite interesting as well that I wanted to bring up. Um, but yeah, you know, it's not hard to find. There's so many around, so many people with interesting and like Woody said, fun people who are having fun on the platform. But what's right, the hard part is finding who's the right one for the brand, who's the right one that's going to bring your message out in the content that they are good at. Right. There's so many who are doing education. There's so many who are doing uh, recipes, like I said. Yeah, it's just that. I think that's, it's not tricky. It's tricky when it comes to just finding the right one. Right, right. Val- Valerie, how has that journey been uh, for, for uh, VLMYR? How, how have you guys navigated this? Actually, I find that it's not, the difficult part is not in finding people. The difficult part is getting people to suddenly have fun when there's a brand. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, it's funny, like, even if you found the right TikToker, and then you say, I commissioned you to do this job for brand ABC, suddenly they lost all sense of fun and spontaneity. You know, I, 
you know, I, I think that's the part where I think, you know, we have not cracked, you know, to be very honest. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there must be a very different approach and different way of working on briefs like that, which is why I believe like maybe we haven't gone to a stage where we are ready to, you know, experiment with a brand. And I think it, it takes two hands to clap and the brand needs to be able to say, yes, I'm willing to experiment. Let's not just do one video. Let's do a hundred videos and see what works, right? Like, you know, that, that, that's where people loosen up. Then there's no like, here's a script and then please do this and please say this. And like, you know, it's, I think people somehow we, we, it's very important, you know, like Woody said and all, it's all about enjoying yourself. So, how do we make sure the influencers are enjoying themselves when they are doing something for brands too? And the brands should allow them to enjoy themselves when they are making that content. Yeah, I think Valerie said this uh, interesting thing, right? Like, um, you know, when there's a script and when there's money involved, yeah. you're going to sell your soul and you're not going to perform the best, right? And you all remember Ocean Spray dog face, right? Like that guy was famous. No one paid him to do that, but it became like probably one of the most uh, famous ads that was not meant to be an ad and no one paid him to do it. There was no script. It, and imagine if there was a brief for that, you would never achieve that kind of content, right? Like I, and, and I worked with this guy called Gary uh, V. If you all don't know him, he's now huge on two things, NFT and TikTok, right? And he's always pushing content, pushing TikTok. Uh, our brief from our global boss, which is Gary is do a lot of TikTok first, forget about the campaigns, forget about the film ads. And, and we already talked about con quality, right? Like keep doing stuff, experimenting. It's something that I, I learned from Gary and the, the Vayner style of working as well. They, they have, we have this thing called Vayner volume uh, model where you just basically put tons of content out and then put it to the real world. The one that works, take it, optimize it, turn it into a campaign. It's an interesting way to kind of tackle social and tackle TikTok and stuff like that, right? Uh, just don't script the whole thing, go to one person. Maybe the way we change this is, here's a brand, work with a thousand different uh, TikTok influencers or TikTokers, right? And just give them, this is what you probably just need to touch on. But however the content is, the script is, you do it in your way. I think also that, I mean, just to touch on the part of experimenting, experimentation is, you know, a way to create the next original content. The problem now is when you don't allow yourself to experiment means you have, so you get, you get worried, you get, you have your budget, you have your media dollars, and then you want to have guaranteed results. I mean, that's when you start going backwards and say, I, I just need to copy something that's successful. You know, I, I, but that's, that's going against the grain of being creative, being authentic. I mean, it's experiment. I mean, when you, ex when you allow your spouse to experiment, you will come up with the next big thing. You're more likely to come up with that, you know, instead of, yeah, copying something that hundred other brands have done. I think we need to, like, add to what Valerie said, you need to also be very flexible. I, I wish the brands would be more flexible from the start, saying that, like Valerie said, let's experiment in the first month and see perhaps we have plan A, plan, four plans, plan A, B, C, D, and which one resonates with the um, with, with the TikTokers, and then we'll, we'll push onto that. For example, you plan a big budget, but from the start, you might want to invest more in terms of experimenting, because you don't want to be stuck with just one concept, and once you push that concept onto the platform, and what if it doesn't work, then what do you say? It doesn't work? Maybe it just, it just doesn't resonate to the audience at that point in time. I, I, I have this thing, when I go on TikTok, I make sure I have three R's in all my videos. Real, rare, and right. Uh, you, you gotta be real, uh, you gotta be authentic, you gotta be yourself, you gotta be rare, even though you're doing the challenges, but you gotta be different from the other TikTokers and people would wanna feel, wow, I've never seen this sort of video or I've, I've never seen Woody doing this before, I, I would watch. And then you got to be right, right meaning right place, right time. So perhaps a concept, you might have a great concept for your brand, but just at that point in time, people aren't into perhaps some dances. So you got to make sure that you're on the right, you're in the right place and right time before you launch your campaign or content. I guess okay. from a, guess from a brand perspective, I think the same problem or same joy happens even when we co-work with agencies, right? I think it's very easy to get into two extremes. 
either it's jail brief, like I tell you what to do, or it's everywhere brief, like you don't know what you want, right? Seems like I can go anywhere, but actually there is something in client mind. Actually, it's not written very clearly. So I think this, this is a, a also experience we learned uh, together with uh, um, agencies like Amanda Media, also the uh, content creators on on the on TikTok. So how to find a sweet point that something that really the brand believes in and very critical still can be expressed clearly with full crystal clarity, but with the trust on their creation. So again, go back to what I mentioned at the first beginning, lean on their expertise and trust. This is more easier said than to take it, making it happen. So basically, need to be very humble. Say, we are a brand that we believe in what, we know what the brand should aim for. However, we are not expertise on getting out the creative and also understand what is going to fly in the platform like TikTok. So just listen and then listen genuinely and then form a productive and uh, uh, effective uh, conversation, then we can come to a common ground and make it really fly high. So that, that, that that's absolutely true. I, I, I think, uh, Woody, something that, that, that you uh, said, that the, the, the real rare and I think time, I, I think uh, that's, that's, that's such a great uh, analogy. And I think that the fact that you mentioned, you know, finding the right time, because I, I think what happens is, like you already said, a lot of brands catch on trends and say, okay, but they missed the bus because, you know, that trend's kind of gone maybe a month ago. And then they're like, okay, let's kind of see if we, we can do that. And, you know, the other thing that, that I also, uh, we also recommend when we work with brands is that, you know, uh, a lot of brands, some of them very actively work on digital. And I think all of you uh, have been uh, obviously very active on digital, but a lot of, uh, you know, the legacy brands, sometimes, uh, you know, they see competition on the platform and they can do reactive and they say, can we do the exact same they did and, you know, put it on TikTok? And that's when we have to actually struggle and tell them won't be that easy. So, so yeah, I mean, have you had any of such instances, uh, Vijay or Valerie, have you guys had any such instances where you've had a brand come in and say, can we do that same campaign that you guys did for these stats? Yeah, we get that all the time, right? Uh, people uh, will see what's, I mean, that's the problem with seeing what's successful and then trying to copy. Uh, but, you know, as a creative, we always try to battle that as well. Like, you know, let's do something different. Let's do something interesting. Uh, sometimes you can't just go and tell that straight away. You need to say, okay, I can do this. Here's an example of that. But what's something nobody's done before? What's something that you think is right? And experiment and see which one works. You know, like it just always goes back to like, you know, trying to convince uh, the brand to be brave to do something new. Um, we can follow, but let's not follow. Why follow when you can find your own niche or find your own thing? what's right for you, you know, like it's just ways of selling something that's different, something that's new, being brave, being experimental, all just all those things. Now. Like we will always get briefs like that. Well, yeah, I, I mean, for us as, I mean, as agencies, that's, and that's always what I push, you know, our own creatives, like our value is only when we bring something original, right? I mean, if the client really wants to replicate something, if I'm I'm honest with my client, I would say save money, go to a production house, or go direct to TikTok, and you know get it done. Like you would you would save a lot of money. You don't have to pay the agency to to do something exactly the same. You get what I mean? Um, so we always start from the premise of let's propose something different. And I of course like, we we we've, we've gotten clients who come back and even our own agent, some of our own agency folks will go like, do we really want to do this? It's never been done before. <laughs> like you know what if it fails? I'm like. Try it. But that's exactly our role. I mean, that's exactly the celebration of TikTok too. They, people want something different. Yes, it will be a gamble. Everything new will be a gamble. I mean, the first time the iPhone came out, it is a gamble. You know, it's, so I think it's the same thing. It is, that's our spirit as a creative agency that your, your responsibility is to bring something new, you know. So I, you know, I have no doubt that if the client wants us to do something exactly the same, um, you know, it will get, it, it, with the numbers on TikTok, I'm sure they will get the kind of media results that they want. But even then, you know, even when a client comes to us with that, we will always go back and say, okay, even if you want to do dance, how can I do a dance that nobody has ever seen before on your platform? Right? How can I play with the frame of your, you know, with your, of your interface? Yeah, you know, there's so many ways. How can I play with perspective? How can I do it differently? How can I do it upside down? How can I do it, you know, with a micro camera or something like a 360 camera? Anything like just 
do some push something, push something different, right? And I think with that, I think clients are willing to buy. Like, you know, I mean, of course, you know, yeah, like I said, if you, if they want A and you give them Z, it may, they may not, it might be too nervous for them, right? So, you know, sometimes we, we will make sure that we get them at least A plus something. <laughs> I mean, a good example of that is Renji, right? Um, we work together on this Atomi Kittens campaign and Renji is a brand, you know, I think they were so open to doing things that are different. Um, the whole problem, I think, like Renji said, was uh, in a lot of that finance uh, kind of uh, e-commerce platforms and uh, buy now, pay later. It's always using famous celebrities and we didn't want to go down that route. So let's just not follow. Let's just create our own influencers. We ended up with cats because obviously everybody loves cats on social media and that's how Atomic Kitten came out, right? So kudos to Renji and the team for like just buying something new, buying something different. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of brands who are out there who are willing also to take that risk and try something new, right? Yeah, I think today we talk about the theme as joy. I do believe the creation process should be joyful as well. So together with the agency, together with the platforms, if we don't enjoy ourselves in the process, then we are not going to produce a joyful campaign for the consumers. So that's why we, uh, at the first beginning, when we uh, pick the Venom Media as our creative uh, partner, uh, we say that we share the commonality. We do want to create something that we love by ourselves, that we enjoy by ourselves, right? Let's have fun. Work, work is already boring enough. Why not make marketing, make campaign, campaign planning and execution a bit more fun so that we can bring this back to our consumers? Absolutely. I, I think that, that, that that's so true. I think uh, if, if you don't make fun and, and you, if you don't find joy in doing, I think even work on a daily basis, I, I think it just kind of, put your life a little lower. But I, I, I think that's some absolutely wonderful insights that I've gotten from all of you. I, I think uh, we're almost out of time. Uh, I'd just like to take, uh, say that you know, it's been a pleasure speaking with all of you. And thank you so much, Valerie, Vijay, Vanji, and Woody for your insights. Uh, and I think this has been a wonderful session. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you to all our panelists for providing us with such a strong discussion for our final panel for the day.